Hi guys. Oops. Sorry. Going the wrong way. This is Deb. Of course. You know that. Um, a lot of people have been asking me to do a tutorial on how to make beaded charms. Like for attaching to pocket letters or purse charms or whatever. Um, and I've never done a tutorial before. So I'm pretty nervous about doing that. But so what I thought I'd do is start at the very beginning, which is where I started back in, I think it was 2011. Um, and I'm going to show you a book that my daughter gave me, which started me on this journey. She gave me a book and a kit for Christmas that year. I'm pretty sure it was 2011. Um, and I had taken one class prior to that. It was like an hour class in a local um, boutique kind of place where they gave classes for an hour on Saturdays or something. Anyway, and it was specific to earrings. But that is a good place to start for making charms and bead dangles and things like that because think if you, when you think about it, a beaded earring is basically a bead dangle hooked onto an ear wire. Um, but I'm not going to get into earrings specifically tonight. I'm actually going to go even more basic than that is what do you need supplies to make these things, which many of you probably already know. Um, so it may be very junior to you, but I spent, I, I got a basic kit, okay, but then I went out, I got so into it, I spent a lot of money on jewelry tools. And I'm going to show you the very basics you need to make bead charms or dangles. There are some other ones you'd need if you make strung jewelry, this, so it, there, there are going to be some other ones you're going to need. But these are going to be the basic supplies. So this is video one in charm making, and it's going to be about supplies. Okay. Number one, round nose. These are called round nose pliers, and they are angled. Um, now, if you want consistently sized loops, you can still use these. And what many people suggest is to take a marker such as this and just put a mark on the pliers. It's really hard to do this behind a camera. Um, at the point where you want to always put your wire to make a loop. okay, And that way um, you have consistent size loops. So that's a good thing to do. A different option is to purchase a plier such as this, and for loops on charms, I use the very smallest setting. Now, if I'm making a, a handmade chain or something, I'll go up bigger, or if I'm making earring wires, I'll use one of the bigger ones um, to make the part that goes through your ear, but this is a good one to have for because it has so many different purposes and you see it's not slanted okay um, so that that's an option but this is a very basic tool doesn't cost as much and these are a beetle on I don't know I'm pretty sure I got these at Michaels I don't know if you can get them anymore but they're an ergonomic style um, and they have this spring thing in here which I really like because to me it's easier for me to grip. Now I have small hands. There are also there are so many different kinds of pliers. If you notice this one, look how much bigger the handle is, right? So that actually is not as comfortable for me, but people who have big hands, that would be more comfortable to have a larger handle. And they make round nose pliers with a larger handle. They make them all different ways. Okay, second essential chain nose. People say flat nose sometimes. That is incorrect and I will show you the difference in a minute. Chain nose um, is like rounded on the top but they are flat in the center. Now sometimes you will see pliers in this shape that have um, ridges in them. That's a no-no for jewelry making because it will mar your wire. If you're using, especially if you're using plated wire, 
um, you know, silver plated over copper or something, um, it will mar the wire so badly that the copper shows through many times. So that is not recommended for making jewelry. Some people really like them because it helps them get a grip on their wire, but everything I've been taught is do not use the ones with ridges. That's a no-no. So these are called chain nose, and I'm going to lay them there for a second along with the round nose. Those were also by Beetalon. These are my favorite two pliers, just so you know. Um, and then, let's see. I'm going to show you flat nose. These are flat nose, and I'm going to hold up the other ones. Do you see the difference? Okay, flat nose has a flat nose here where chain nose has a pointed nose. Some are pointier than others. That is one disadvantage to this pair is these are not necessarily the best for um, working in what's called chain mail because they're not really the narrowest uh, kind that you can get. Um, these are flat nose. They have an advantage for some things too. I like to use these to make that little slip up on the back of earring wires because I get a consistent size of that flip up. So I'm telling you my secrets here. Um, now, the other thing to keep in mind is there are different lengths. These are called short chain nose and these are called long chain nose because they are much longer. These are good for getting into spaces, you know, where you have to finagle, but you don't need a long chain nose for doing uh, most beaded charms or whatever. And I think, actually, frankly, I got these at a yard sale. And um, it's good that we're here. I don't know if we're going to be able to see this, but these are actually, yeah, right here, these are actually nicked. When they get nicked like that, they're not really good to use anymore because they're going to also mar your wire. So once you get them, they either have to be sanded down. Um, I use these only as a second pair as I have to. Um, you know, when you need two pair to open and close jump rings or something. But most of the time I use these. I have grown to love these, um, and these are called bent nose pliers. So, what I use the most in making my charms is chain nose, bent nose, just so I can open uh, and close things better, round nose, and then there's one other essential item that you need, and this one's an important one, and it's cutters. If you invest in a reasonably priced pair of these and maybe either these or another pair of chain nose. Spend a little more money and get a good cutter. Um, let me show you the cutter I started with. I believe it was also beetle on and I'm not knocking them. These are fine for cutting beading wire. That's not the same as wire you use like um, to make a um, an earring or, or a, a charm. Okay, beading wire is stainless steel covered with a coating. These don't cut worth a darn, and what I'm using them for now is um, to cut the little spurs off my paper cutting dies. You know, when they come all hooked together and they have that little spur, they, they cut that barely. But I won't use them on my jewelry anymore. These are my favorite cutters. Um, and I'm not promoting that you get these, but I'm just saying get a good pair of cutters if you're going to do this for any length of time. These are called micro shears. They also have a macro shear and they have other ones. Um, these are a flush cutter because they cut flush on one side and then there's like a well on the other side. They're called a flush cutter. They will cut your wire flush on this side. That's important to know. <laughs> um, now, these, because they're called micro shears, they only go up to, uh, it says up to 14 gauge, but I use these for only up to like 18 gauge. And the way, I want to get into that too in a minute. Um, I don't like to use these for thicker wires is what I'm 
trying to say basically. I save these for my jewelry charms and things. If I'm getting into thicker wire, I have another pair that is a little heavier duty because I don't want to ruin these, okay? Because if these get nicked and things, which looks like they're starting, nope, that's just a bend. Good for you. These are my favorite ones. <laughs> Uh, these are by Zoron. There are other good quality ones out there. I mean, there's some really top-of-the-line ones that I just, I can't afford. And actually, these, again, fit in my hand good. So there's other ones that are professional ones that the handle's longer. If you have large hands, that works for those folks better. But I, I have tried a pair of those, and I can't use them. I can't even remember what the name of them is right now. Um, so I love my Zorons, and I will state that just because I, I use them all the time. Okay, so those are your tools. Chain nose, oops, round nose, bent nose, or another pair of chain nose. Um, do not use, you don't want to use your round nose and your chain nose for opening because the round nose will bend the wire out of shape. And then also your cutters. Okay, so those are your essentials for making charms as far as tools. Now, um, the next thing, uh, oh, one more thing. My daughter, I'm not paid by this company. I'm just going to show you this because this was my very first jewelry book ever. And it was probably from Michaels called Beating 101, filled with secrets, tips, and techniques. It has a lot of what I'm going over here and then a few other things as well. And it goes into all different types of beads. It does not go into bead weaving or seed beading. Um, that's, a, that's a whole different subject. Just like in paper crafting, in beading or jewelry making, there are so many um, paths you can take. There's beading. There's wire work, which is sort of what we're going to be doing. Basic wire work. Um, there's seed bead uh, bead weaving there's enameling torch enameling um, there's resin there's polymer clay oh my god there's a mixture you know there's mixed media in jewelry as well um, so there's there's just so many avenues and you can make costume jewelry and you can make high-end jewelry and then there's silversmithing and goldsmithing as well um, you know, setting cabochons, setting gemstones, precious gemstones and things. So, uh, we're definitely not getting into that because I'm only a beginner at that. <laughs> um, I love torch enameling, but that's for another day. Um, so anyway, I don't know that I'll ever be qualified to teach that. Okay, next thing you need for making charms um, is something like these. These are called head pins. Head pin because they have a head on them. Um, for most charms, I have to tell you guys, these come in all different lengths and all different um, uh, thicknesses. And my favorite for most charms is 2 inch 21, sorry, 2 inch 21 gauge. Um, something like that. The higher the gauge the thinner it is. So don't get, for example, 24 gauge and think it's going to be a sturdy pin. Um, however, if you have little tiny beads like these freshwater pearls, a 21 gauge, if I can even find the hole, here we go, probably isn't going to fit. Oh, that one did. Made a liar out of me. See? So that is a head pin. It puts a head at the bottom, stops the bead. Um, and it's usually long enough for most bead dangles unless you have really big beads, in which case you'll have to go up to like a three inch, two and a half or three inch. Um, but if you're just starting, a good size is a two inch, 21 gauge. Will stores like Michaels and all that tell you the size? They'll usually tell you the length. They don't always tell you the gauge. Um, I like to buy mine in bulk um, online. These, these particular ones are from Fire Mountain Gems. 
um, because I use a lot of them. I had been when I wasn't in a slump. <laughs> um, now, there's another um, thing you could buy, which is called an eye pin. And I don't know that I have any of those anymore. What an eye pin is, let me just make you one. And this is why I don't buy them anymore. Um, an eye pin has an eye. Let me see, I have this so it won't swing all over the place. Alright. Alright, this is a piece of silver plated copper wire. It's a spool of it. Oops. And let me just get a piece off. And I will show you how to make an eye pin. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Um, the way to make an eye pin, have a piece of wire, bend it over, get your round nose pliers, pull it back towards you, turn your wrist, put your little eye there. What you want to do, I hope you can see this, is make sure that this is straight and you've got a lollipop kind of thing going on there, okay? And then, um, oops, I forgot. Usually, what you do is called put um, break the neck. You don't have to do that when it's on um, when you're making it from scratch like this. But when it's next to the bead, you have to do that more. And I'm doing this wrong too. Sorry, guys. So then you just cut as close to the neck as you can. Hold the other piece of wire so it doesn't go flying and hit your cat or dog or child in the eye and then just sorry wiggle this back and forth front to back not side to side till it's closed and there you have an eye pin okay straight piece of wire almost <laughs> um, with an eye okay and then you put your bead on and this would allow you then to have, as opposed to this, uh, can't find the hole. You see, this one allows you to dangle other beads off of it. This one is like the bottom bead. You don't want any more dangles off of it. Okay. So this is your eye pen. And then, if you want to make a, this is called a simple loop, by the way. This is called a simple loop. They are good for things like doing dangles off of them, but uh, they're not as secure because if they get caught on something, they could pull open and you could lose whatever was attached to them. Um, so, if you want to make um, just a simple bead link, okay, I'm, see I'm starting to make the other kind of loop already. Um, what you're supposed to do is push this over. That is actually a step called breaking the neck, but you're doing it early. Put your pliers in, bring them over, turn your wrists so that they're up and down, bring your um, wire around, straighten it up, and this is a really bad job on camera, of course. <laughs> and I just pull it till it's tight, and I'm off my mark. There we go. And then snip it. And wiggle it closed. This was a terrible example. <laughs> but there is the close. I have to turn this light down. It's like glaring terribly. Oops, that's a little too dark. There we go. Can you see that? So now we have a bead link, um, and I have them going in the same direction now. That's a simple bead link. So you can attach that just by opening. Now opening, you do the same thing. You always go front and then 
attach your item and then go back. All right, that's a simple bead link or simple loop. Simple loop. And I'm going to try to show you how to make a wire wrapped loop, which is more secure. Okay, I'm going to bend this over. And um, I don't know if I have enough wire, truthfully, for this, but I'm going to try it. Put your pliers in. Bend them over the wire, over the plier, excuse me. And do the same thing as you did before. Sorry, this is so blurry. This is really not a good demo. I do apologize. Then take your pliers out. Okay, and instead of cutting it, now this is where I need my my bent nose pliers or another pair of chain nose pliers. Take a hold of the end. Oops, try and hold it still. Take a hold of the end and wrap that little tail. I usually like to do two or three wraps and then snip that little piece off with the flush part to the wire. And then you're supposed to push that little tail in. Now most of the time I wait until I get a bead on, quite honestly. Um, let's try that. Because I think it makes it easier. Now, if your bead is fragile, very fragile, try and do it before you get the bead on. But sometimes when I do it without the bead on, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, the wire moves and it doesn't lay flat. So, anyway, that is a wrap loop. Now, the advantage to this is it's secure. It doesn't, it's not going to break as much. And I prefer that for purse charms, especially near the top of the charm where you're hooking it to the latch because that's where it's going to get the most wear and pull. Um, however, the disadvantage is you can't twist that open to add anything to it now. So you would have to have um, something like this. Oops get it turned right. Open the simple loop, add it on to your other piece, oops, which I'm going to lose the bead on because I didn't put, I didn't close the other side, and close that back up. And now you have a little bead dangle on a, a um, simple loop onto a wrapped loop. And then what you can do, if that's your final one, is just finish that off. By doing another wrapped loop. Oh, um, I probably didn't say, but um, the spacing above the bead to do a wrap loop it needs to be just a little, this is probably a little much, but I tend to do, like I said, two to three wrap loops, typically three, and I have found for me, see that's just about three perfectly, by the time I snip this, which I had to raise it a little bit, snip it, by the time I push that little piece in tight, it is three wrapped loops. Um, anyway, um, what I find for me is if I go with the tip of my chain nose pliers right above the bead, and bend over the chain nose. That little bit of space is perfect for two to three wrap loops. 
because you're going to make your loop above the plier like that. Turn, pull it around, and I always like to make sure it looks like a lollipop. I don't know why this is so not focusing. Then I get my chain nose, hold it, and I'm just using my fingers this time. This is a very sloppy one, actually, guys. So sorry. See, I can't pull it tight with my hands. I have to use an extra set of pliers. But if you have good finger strength, by all means, you can use your fingers. Whatever works. Yeah, that one's a mess. That one will be edited out. Anyway, that's it. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Um, I'm going to come back with part two at some future point. But tonight I have to stop because I have got to get a charm made. <laughs> I have to go out in the mail tomorrow. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.